If you don't play to win, then you shouldn't play the game. If you ain't going hard, then just get up out my lane. Hopkins making the catch. Touchdown! <laughs> Calvin Ridley. Jack! Big! Yeah! Will Levis! That dude has got an arm! You talking Whoa. from the sideline or you in the game? You talking from the sideline or you in the game? Let's go out here and have fun today, man. Tajay! You see the name, Titans football with Brian Callahan, presented by SeatGeek. I'm Mike Keith, welcoming you to the BetMGM studio. Let's bring him in. Brian Callahan, Titans head coach. So glad that you're with us. It's good to be here. My it first television show. I've never done this before. Your first television yeah. show. Don't be nervous. I'm not. Okay, good. No, I'm not. Not yet, at least. All right, now you've had 48 hours to review Sunday's game with Chicago, watch the tape, getting ready to totally put it to bed. Yeah. Final thoughts overall on the first game of the season against the Bears. Yeah, really encouraging start in some elements of our, of our team. I thought uh, defensively we were fantastic um, for most of the game, and that was a winning performance on their part. I felt like offensively the first half was uh, started a little slow, found our rhythm, found a way to score uh, two touchdowns in that first half and put a field goal on the board after the, the turnover uh, to give us a 17-3 lead at halftime. That was about as good as we could ask for uh, on the road, opening game, uh, to be in that position at halftime uh, was, was really encouraging. Uh, the, the part that we didn't do very well was protect the football. Um, so we, we give up a blocked punt for a touchdown, an interception return for a touchdown, and then a sack fumble that leads to three more points. And in a, uh, in a tight game on the road, that was enough to uh, uh, allow us to, to not win the game. So uh, a lot of really positive things sort of all around, uh, just too many mistakes to overcome uh, at the end of the day in an opening game against a good NFL football team. Part of Titans football with Brian Callahan is a new feature that's going to take you inside what happened Sunday. It's called Sunday's Game Experience. Here it is. Sunshine high above Soldier Field today. A new era of Tennessee Titans football with Brian Callahan as the head coach. Oh, Time. Guess what time it is now? It's time to lock them motherfucking gates. Yeah. It's time to lock them motherfucking gates. Yeah. It's about us. Play for each other, man. Uh, Play for your brother. We all we got. We all we yeah. need. Santos approaches and we're underway. Williams under pressure from Colbert. Spinning. Set! Sebastian Joseph. Dang! Gonna give it to Pollard on the left side of the 20, to the 15, to the 10, no! to the 5. Touchdown! The Titans! <laughs> Jones and Herbert are deep for Nick Folk's kickoff. Comes downfield. Jones fumbles the kick. He kicks it forward. And the Titans, I think, he pounced on it. And the Titans, Julius Chestnut, gobbled it up! Snap, set. Kick on the way! Good! Titans 10, Bears nothing. Dropping, firing, got it complete! First down and more, oh, and that's Ridley. Levis gonna keep it, read option play, and Levis with a big gainer. Levis, under pressure, firing towards a Conquo. He caught that ball in that end zone! Touchdown, Titans, and the Titans! have extended the advantage. Feels pressure up the middle, hit, sacked! Hello, Harold Landry! Yeah, Y'all talking about? Come on, man! And here comes Stonehouse to punt again. Stonehouse's punt is blocked. It's been picked up, and Jonathan Owens will run it into the end zone for a touchdown, Chicago Bears. Levis in trouble and throws an interception in the flat. It's being returned for a touchdown by the Chicago Bears, and the Bears have the lead. The snap, looks, fires downfield, going for Boyd. It is intercepted by Johnson. Johnson will take a knee at the 40-yard line, and with a minute five to go, that's going to do it. 
Sunday's game experience from Chicago on Titans football with Brian Callahan. The atmosphere at Soldier Field was loud, loud. Not the first time that you've dealt with loud in no. your career, but the first time this entire group of Titans, coaches and players, have dealt with it. Overall, what can you take from that experience so that maybe you can better handle the noise when you go to Miami in a couple weeks? Yeah, it was a great atmosphere. Um, it was it was loud. The energy was was palpable. You could feel it in the stadium, how excited they were to watch their team play. And um, it's going to allow us a chance to function better the next time because you can never simulate those uh, environments. It's everything that you could ever look for uh, intensity-wise from, from your home fans. They got that. And we weren't able to communicate as well as we wanted to. It made our communication difficult. Uh, we're on a silent snap count on top of it, which makes it even more difficult. Uh, definitely the advantage tilts to the defense in those situations. Um, and we didn't do a good enough job being in a more manageable spot, so they could be in loud pass rushing situations that really put us uh, in a tough spot. So the atmosphere was, was great to play in. Um, you can never simulate that. It's hard to ever create that in a practice. It's hard to ever create that anywhere other than on the road in somebody else's stadium. And so we'll be better for it the next time. There's a lot of things that we can take from that and learn from. But the Titans fans can create it on Sunday at Nissan Stadium. There's no doubt about that. <laughs> Look, we're going to need every last Titans fan with the same energy and enthusiasm uh, that, that we've seen from you in every spot in the offseason and to turn it up 100 notches. We, we need uh, that support from our fan base. Our players feel it. Uh, our coaches feel it. And it, it makes a difference. There is a huge advantage uh, when your crowd acts the way that the Chicago crowd did. And I know that we won't be outdone by the Chicago Bears uh, when it comes to our fan uh, attendance and experience for our players. I know that'll be everything that we're hoping it'll be come Sunday against the New York Jets. All right, Brian, a lot coming up on this edition of Titans Football with Brian Callahan. But up next, it's Titans Tape, where Coach Callahan will break down a play that shows you just how good the entire defense was on Sunday. Stay with us. Titans tape with Brian Callahan showing a play that really symbolizes how the Titans defense played all day Sunday in Chicago. Brian, let's look at the Sebastian Joseph Day sack to see how everybody made it happen. This is, a, this is exactly what you're hoping for from a defense when you say their rush and coverage work together. Because this is what we did to Caleb Williams all day. It's really a, a perfect snapshot of how well our defense played. And what happens here, you see, is they're trying to run a play-action play where the offensive line is reaching, and they're trying to get everyone to flow and then react. But what we see first, great communication by our two safeties. All right, excellent coverage here by Legarius. And then the key to the play is linebacker Jack Gibbons because what the intent of this play is, as you watch it unfold, is sneaking that tight end up the boundary off the action to see if you can get lost and see how undisciplined your defense is. Well, we're not undisciplined. Our defense was all over it. And you can see, there is nobody on this stage that is open anywhere for the quarterback to throw the ball. That's the first part of what makes this sack great. The second part is the initial rush by Keandre Coburn. As they go to stretch, right, he wins on the rush up field. It's a great get off. And he ends up in the quarterback's pocket pretty quickly. So right as Caleb comes out of the fake, he's got an unblocked player running right at him. And one of the things that we did this whole game plan was to cage rush him and keep him in the pocket to keep him from extending plays. So the rush starts here with Keandre. And then what happens is then we have a disciplined rush by Sebastian. And then we have our other two with Jalen Harrell and Lynch finishing the rush. So he's got nowhere to go as the play develops. And so as you can see, the first one with Keandre, rock solid coverage, really great Great contain and discipline by Sebastian Joseph Day to stay in his lane and wait for the ball to come to him and a great job finishing. But you can see, right, all four D linemen are around the quarterback and that's the recipe for a really, really impactful sack. Sebastian gets the credit for the sack, but the starting point comes of Keandre and then the rest of the credit at the end of it goes to how tight our coverage was across the field. What about Harold Landry right here? That's a, that's a great point because what happens here is this is a screen and a play action pass all in one. And so as they get down the field, if this tight end gets taken away, as you see down there, they're trying to set up a screen into the boundary. So if Caleb ends up getting out of this, he's probably going to throw this ball right here to their running back as the rush keeps coming. And you can see they got numbers out here. They got enough guys for really what happens to be one player left, and that's Harold Landry. So Harold 
ends up recognizing, reading, and diagnosing, and he makes a beeline for the back. Really great play by Harold. Awareness, understanding, and that's what our defense did to Chicago all day. It was suffocating. There was nowhere for Caleb to go. The ball didn't have any easy space to find down the field, and our pass rush made life really difficult. Good Adam. stuff, Coach. When we come back, Arden Key and LeJarrius Sneed are really good football players. But do, do those football skills transfer to other sports? Spoiler alert, no. We explore with Titans football with Brian Callahan, presented by SeatGeek, return. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Bet MGM studio and Titans football with Brian Callahan, presented by SeatGeek. Speaking of SeatGeek, time now for a segment we're calling SeatGeek Sound. And for this installment, there's no other way to introduce it besides just rolling it. Every athlete dreams of playing on the big stage. Play fake, took it by a low end trouble, and he's going to be sacked! Go! Bright lights, national television, athletic mastery on full display. Hey, no, man, we got that Unless they've never actually played the game before. <sighs> Try not to grab the bags at the end of each round. I never played cornhole in my life, so yeah, I love to play. I heard it's kind of competitive. You know, I went and watched some couple films on, on YouTube and stuff, and I see how intense it got. That seems to be the case for Legereus Sneed and Arden Key, Titans teammates who were asked to participate in the American Cornhole League Super Bowl Series. The pair went to Las Vegas to participate in the event that paired each Titan with a pro cornhole player. We were going to be on TV, so I was like, hey, why not be on there? <laughs> yeah, not unless things yes, are going really bad. Is he Arden? I graded, I would say a B. Come <laughs> on. Uh, I did terrible. But I did better than the professional guy. I did pretty good. Better partner we win. My partner was supposed to be the professional, and he didn't come up and show out. You know, sometimes it's not about winning and losing. Sometimes it's just about having fun. If Nashville ever have a cornhole competition, hey, invite me. Arden Key, tighten up, baby. <laughs> Did the pair pick up a new hobby? Yes. Is there room for improvement? Also, yes. He like to hit the uh, perfect shot every time. You can't do that. If, if, they miss, if the bag miss on the other team, just get the bag on the board. We're good. The guy I was playing, he was, I thought he was cheating the whole time because he was throwing it there across the line. I didn't know you could do that. What jumps out to me is uh, they're great players, played very well in Chicago, and yet uh, stick to football. That's usually good advice for somebody who's a professional in something <laughs> and not in the other. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, just play football well. Let that be your hobby. But they got to go to Vegas. Who doesn't love Vegas? I, I love Vegas, so no doubt I. about so it. Seat Geek Sound, we'll have more of it. Thanks to A.B. Wells for telling us that great story. More coming up on Titans Football with Brian Callahan, presented by SeatGeek, right after this. Welcome back to Titans Football with Brian Callahan in the BetMGM studio. Since 2022, the NFL has hosted its Coach Accelerator program five times. The 2024 iteration happened right here at the Spring League meeting in Nashville and included participation from the Titans' very own Denard Wilson. In this week's Epic Western Genuine article, Coach Wilson shares his experience with the program that aims to strengthen the pipeline of diverse coaching candidates. I step downhill to him and the ball's gonna come right to you. Denard Wilson has had a busy off season. Use your arms coming out of your break. Your arms went dead. But he did find some time to participate in the NFL's Coach Accelerator program. It was very informative. You know, they had a lot of sessions in terms of training, giving you different scenarios. If you're ever in a position to be a head coach, how would you handle it? And just career development. And then also, you know, have an opportunity to meet some of the owners. Wilson hit the ground running when he was hired as the Titans' new defensive coordinator in February. And since then, he hasn't stopped. Are you on his feet? Here you go. I'm here with my feet are in terms of being a defensive coordinator for the Tennessee Titans, but also in terms of career development and, and trying to excel to get to the ultimate chair. The Accelerator program provides opportunity. The opportunity to learn, to make connections, 
But as program graduate and Titans general manager Rand Carthon reminds, it's the participants' responsibility to turn that opportunity into action. I think you should always invest in your people um, and invest in, you know, in their growth. You as the, as the person, as the employee, you have to invest in your growth as well. As the NFL continues to grow and new talent is coming through the ranks, Commissioner Roger Goodell says he's excited about seeing more participants in this and similar programs rising to prominent positions and using the skills they have refined in these sessions. It's really more broadly about how to develop as an executive because our coaches are executives. They, they have big time jobs and development of talent's a big thing. All right, if you make a call, make a call, everybody get it. Thanks again to Amy Wells for what is a great story about your defensive coordinator who I mean, what can you say about Denard Wilson other than everything he does is impressive? He's been everything I could have ever asked for uh, in the defensive coordinator so far. And, and certainly his participation in that program is deserving. Uh, I think he will, without, one, without a doubt in my mind, uh, he will be a head coach in this league um, probably sooner rather than later. And uh, he's, he'll be deserving of it. And all the things that, that you gather from those experiences – um, are critical. I, it helped me a ton going through the interview process and asking questions and getting feedback. Uh, and that program allows guys a broader, more um, direct dealing with the people that are involved in the processes. And so uh, it's a huge professional development. Just like we have players in our practice squad we're trying to develop, the NFL has coaches that uh, they're trying to develop. And I think it's a great program. And I think Denar is going to benefit greatly from it. Titans coaches and players aren't the only ones who spent the offseason finding ways to improve. The Titans medical team took time to ensure that they were ready for whatever may come their way as the team takes the field this year. Led by NFL medical officer Alan Sills, Titans trainers and medical staff met right here at Ascension St. Thomas Sports Park to simulate a variety of scenarios, including cardiac arrest, spine injuries, and head-related issues. We have an outside company that comes in to basically they're not there to judge us, just to critique us. We talk about scenarios and we've done this many times, but if you can get 1% better each year, that, that's why we do this. You can never be overprepared, but I have tremendous confidence in the, the men and women who fill these roles for us. I think we get to work with the very best of medical professionals. Brian Callahan, you know exactly what that training means. You saw it in action in your time in Cincinnati. Yeah, I was, uh, unfortunately, because it, it was an event that nobody helps to ever see again, uh, but the DeMar Hamlin situation that we had on Monday night against the Buffalo Bills in Cincinnati, um, the response by the medical team, the, the swiftness, the training, the preparedness uh, saved his life. And that was a testament to all of the work they put in to be ready for a situation that you hope never has to happen, um, but they were able to step in immediately uh, and offer life-saving treatment on the spot um, to avert what could have been a, a really tragic situation, and it turns out to be uh, one of the best stories uh, in the NFL as far as his return to play uh, from, that, from that really scary moment. And so it's a testament to the athletic staffs around the league, the preparedness uh, from the league, and there's no safer place you could ever ask to be in on an NFL field. When we come back from break, Brian Callahan will give us his first look at the Titans' upcoming opponent, the New York Jets. Titans football with Brian Callahan, presented by SeatGeek. We'll be right back. Titans home opener Sunday against the Jets. It's time for Callahan's first look presented by Nissan. All right. We got to see the Jets play Monday night football against San Francisco last night. What are you expecting from the New York Jets? Uh, New York Jets defense that has been consistently over the last couple of years, one of the best um, in the league, led by Quinn and Williams, C.J. Mosley and Sauce Gardner. Those guys are uh, impact players, top, top five at their position. You can argue the, where they fall in that role, but they are some of the premier players in their positions um, across the league. And it's a very aggressive defense. It's well coached. They're disciplined. Uh, offensively, they're led by arguably one of the, uh, the top quarterbacks to, to play the position uh, coming off his injury. And um, we're going to need everything we have against Aaron Rodgers. Uh, they got some young, talented skill players. Uh, Brees Hall is one of, the, one of the more explosive and dynamic backs in the league. And uh, we're going to have our hands full. This is a team that's got a lot of hope. Um, to be a, a playoff contending team with a healthy Aaron Rodgers and then 
we're hoping to give them a, a run for their money when they come here to, to Nashville. So uh, it's a really good team. They got a lot of talent um, and they play really hard. It's a disciplined style of defense. And, um, you know, we're going to have to play well offensively and continue our momentum on defense against this offense. All right, it's Titans and the Jets this Sunday at Nissan Stadium. Kickoff is set for noon. You can hear us on 104.5 The Zone in Nashville and other Titans radio stations, beginning with the award-winning Titans countdown at 11 a.m. We hope you'll join us. Will you come back next week? I think can I we will. we do it again? Yeah. This Good. Okay. I would, I would love to. He's pretty good at this, right? To, yeah. <laughs> Titans football with Brian Callahan, number one in the books. More to come this season. We hope you'll join us. For the head coach, Brian Callahan, I'm Mike Keith. We'll see you Sunday at Nissan Stadium. Have a great night, everybody.